It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I've not had a Sherlin Curler beer, Sherlin Curler Rouge beer for such a long time. Uh, I was, well, my fantastic channel sponsor, beersofeurope.co.uk, said jump on our website this month, pick 12 beers, and we'll send them to you. So I could have gone American, could have gone Belgium, could have gone anywhere in the world really, but I decided this month to go to Germany. So I went on their website, clicked the drop down box, German beer, and I seen this and I thought, I haven't reviewed a Sherlin Curler for such a long time. This is called Hansler, but it's a low alcohol. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't realize, I didn't realize it was a low alcohol beer until it arrived. I should have looked a little bit harder at the beer on their website. It was all written there, it was all said, um, it was all written down. Um, it is, when they say low alcohol, it is 1.2% ABV, but it should still be good because Schirl and Kerner, they're, they're well renowned for their smoked beers. The, the, if you think about the origins of smoked beer, if you think about one German brewery that produces or specialises in smoked beer, then you always think of Schirl and Kerner. Uh, this bottle cap, 500ml bottle, brown bottle, bottle, not bottle, bottle. Um, it's produced in Bamberg in Germany, without further ado, Let's get this beer out into a glass and see what we get. Look at that. Nice amount of smoke on the bottle opening. Beer in the glass. I like the fact when they say it's not a uh, low alcohol that it's not one of these like 0 0.5 alcohol beers. You know, at least they've made it over the 1% one, 1 mark. <laughs> they made it a little bit interesting. Um, I don't generally drink low or, or no alcohol beers. I normally would suggest that I would rather boil the kettle and make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Normally when I'm drinking beer, you know, I like I like something about the 4% and above mark. Anything below that, if I'm honest, I'm, and it's just me being honest, doesn't really grab my interest, doesn't really grab me by the knackers and, 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 and say, hey, open the bottle cap on me and drink me. Yeah, I'd rather make a cup of tea. But... This should be interesting for a low alcohol beer, being a smoked beer from Sherlin Kerner. This should still be a very, very interesting beer. We've got a one finger white head, loads of carbonation, loads of carbonation rolling up the... Oh, no, actually, it's not. It was a pebble dash on the wall behind me. It's actually, it's not too bad. It, it is carbonation there. Yeah, it's... it's brown and amber and slightly hazy. Let's get the aroma on this one. Yeah, this is... So... I understand it an awful lot more than when I first reviewed a Sherlin Curler beer. Um, when I first reviewed a Sherlin Curler beer, I was kind of describing it as bacon. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. You can... It definitely has that kind of slightly smoked bacon aroma to it. But back in the day when I was first reviewing these, I think I reviewed these beers back in uh, 2011, 2012. I was in my first two years of reviewing beer. And I, it's difficult to grasp it what's happening, why the beer smells like this, when you're in the early throes of, 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 of being involved in the beer industry. It was only when I went to Poland, I went to the Tiski Brewery in Poland, and I seen them smoking malts, that the penny dropped, 
and it was like right ah i see so they were they had this old um it was like a great big barbecue if you like a great big metal barbecue with a conveyor belt and they were passing um all your straw colored malts through on a conveyor belt and it was being roasted a bit like when you go to a hotel and you've got those constantly moving toasting machines and you just put two slices of bread in and it passes under the heat and sometimes you've got to put it through twice but apart from that you get toast at the end of the day don't you well it's exactly the same process of of of, of toasting and smoking and smoking the malt is probably a very different thing but but roasting malts if you can think of it like that it's a it's a yeah, smoking malt is probably a very, very different thing again. It's probably malt in a room full of smoke, if I'm honest. But anyway, aroma. Yeah, it's, it's really bacon. Bacon, smoked malt, very smoky. Like, like you've walked into a room that's been on fire. With a little bit of sweet malt. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Whoa. So, actually, it starts off very thin, very refreshing and sweet and very sweet it starts off being very sweet whoa getcha really does it's a challenging beer really challenging beer it's challenging me now after reviewing beer for 13 years, 13 years on a daily basis, this is still challenging my, challenging my brain massively, taxing my brain massively because it's so, it's so, so complex. Such a complex beer. You could quite easily quite easily do this ah no not for me not for me put it down go back to the bar and go oh i'll have a pale ale or i'll have a a, a new england ipa or i'll have a stout or a porter you know beers you understand beers you know but i read an article this morning regarding um Marcus Rashford and why am I bringing Marcus Rashford the Manchester United footballer the striker into into my beer review well Eric Gentag whatever his name is I'm not a Man United fan Eric Tag whatever his name is um has just written an article saying um Rashford is on fire he's scoring goals for fun but I'm watching to make sure no laziness gets into his game. Not a touch of laziness gets into this man's game. Because I want to keep him at the pinnacle. <coughs> Pardon me. At the pinnacle. The absolute pinnacle of his game. I want him to carry on scoring goals. So I'm watching for laziness. And you guys are probably doing the same thing. Right now right here is simon the beer reviewer from wales still pushing the boundaries of of beer of what he likes because it could be very easy couldn't it it could be very very easy for me to go i love new england ipas that's all i want to review or i love porters that's all I want to review. Or I love stouts. That's all I want to review. Previously to this beer review, 
I reviewed a four year barrel aged on Brunel barrels, a rosemary wheat beer from Belgium, from the Dr. Van der Coroner. Next beer review is this, this challenging, really, really challenging, smoky, Schirlenkörner Rouge beer, smoke beer. It is it's really challenging, it's really. But, but, like the 100 IBU beers, like the sour beers that you get, that sourness dissipates, doesn't it? That once you start drinking it, when you get into it, the sourness starts to lower. Your palate adjusts and gets used to it. That's exactly what's happening here today. Exactly what's happening here. I'm drinking this beer right now and all of a sudden my palate is adjusting to the smoke. It's not as intense. It's not as smoky. It's much more palatable. So the, the, le the lesson here is to maybe leave it on the side for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Let your palate adjust to that first couple of tastes and then get back into it. What an interesting beer. What an interesting beer. Even though it's low alcohol, the focus here is not about the alcohol. The focus is very much on the complexity of the beer. And I love that. Even though I made a mistake in buying the beer, low alcohol, just saying just now, I don't really like anything under 4% ABV. Wow, this beer's blown my mind. It's blown my mind because of the complexity of it. Look at that head now, now I've poured the rest of the beer, that sediment into the glass. It's great. It's great. I'm going to rate it. Sherlin Kerner, as a brewery, recognises that they will not be the biggest, best-selling beer in the world. They know that, they're happy with that, and they can live with that. They own a specialist area of the market, and that area of the market that they own is for the most inquisitive, most open-minded beer drinkers in the world. If you can find this beer, buy it, try it, open your mind, give it a chance, give it some time, like I did. Give it some time on the beer mat. Le have a couple of tastes, leave it for 30 seconds to a minute, then go back to it. You'll learn to love it really quickly. The first couple of tastes for me was a challenge, it really was. But once I got over that, once my palate adjusted, it's a lovely beer. It's a lovely beer. I like it enough to give it a 9 out of 10. It's a Stone the Crows, 9 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.